All right, so I have to show you Jim Simon's his secret Markov model here. Let's just dive into it. Let's watch this video. We'll take some notes. And the reason I do this is because every day I'm either researching, backtesting, or implementing. I believe code is a great equalizer. And I know the process of automating your trading starts with the research. So I'm always watching videos, reading books, et cetera, et cetera, in order to come up with new alpha, alpha that I can then go ahead and back test to see if it actually worked in the past. If it worked in the past, it might work in the future. It's not guaranteed, of course. This is the RBI system that I follow. It's free on moondab.com along with the whole roadmap for automated trading. But let's dive into this video because Jim Simons is the GOAT. Jim Simons ran up a net worth of $31 billion and me, no way, not yet. So let's go ahead and chase him. Of quants, Jim Simons medallion fund has done 39% net of fees for three decades, which proves that it works. They were very, very smart. Yes, they got very rich. They're very, very smart. And very smart and very rich. Yeah. And, 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 and very high grade, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Jim Simons. Jim Simmons is considered to be one of the greatest traders of all time who has beaten the likes of Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger. And his strategy has been purely a quant based strategy. Um, what he does in his fund is extremely secretive, but there are certain ideas and there are certain concepts that we could get from what he does through this book that I've been reading. And most of my uh, strategies that I've come across, uh, which I do in my personal life, has also been inspired from this book. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to take some of the information that we can find in this book and start coding uh, and try to see the result. It's a really good book, The Man Who Solved the Market. I actually interviewed Gregory Zuckerman, who wrote the book, so he spent a lot of time with Jim. You could go ahead and watch that pod if you want to. It's on my channel somewhere, dude. Uh, and try to figure out what Jim Simmons has been doing in this fund. So one of the pages in the book here, um, it's about Axe. Axe used to work for Jim Simmons. Uh, he was part of the fund. And he's also some kind of a mathematical genius. I think he's got like amazing papers written by him. Uh, and if you can see in this paragraph, he focuses on a thing called Markov chain. So in a Markov chain, each step along the way is impossible to predict with certainty, but future steps can be predicted with some degree of accuracy if one relies on a capable model. Um, and they go on to create a stochastic equation based on this Markov chain. Um, another important thing, which is just a few pages prior to this, was this one, uh, Lofer, again, another mathematical genius working for Simmons, uh, and they did more of a mean reverting strategy. So here, the strategies were often based on the idea that prices tend to revert after an initial move higher or lower, and they would buy futures contracts if they opened at unusually low prices. So that is a typical example of a mean reverting strategies. Um, so at the end of the book, one of the things that I noticed was his uh, trading result. And if you can see in 2008, 2007, which was basically the recessionary time frame, uh, he went on to make 152% return, 136% return. That's substantially higher than any of those years. And you've got to understand that during recessionary periods, the volatility is extremely high and mean reverting strategies perform extremely well. So even the strategies that we do in our course, especially Q3 and Q5, worked tremendously well during the 2008, 2007 recession and also the past two years. So this is one of the uh, strategies that we teach in the course Q5 uh, and it's performed very well the past two years and also in the 2008 recession, this is a mean reverting strategy. So if I can zoom into some of the strategies, I can hear short here, uh, close position there, uh, long here, close position the next day, uh, long here, close position there. So you're, you're always going to see lots of good trades in recession environment. The past two years has been really good for a mean reverting based strategy. So uh, this is the trading result of that mean reverting strategy on the SPY. And if I can look into that buy and hold equity line, this period you see here, that was the 2008 recession. You can literally see uh, the blue line, which is the S&P 500 buy and hold has crashed almost 50%. But the mean reverting strategy performed extremely well. Now, if you can go back to the 2001, 2002 period, it's literally an X. The blue line went down considerably while our strategy performed extremely well. Same thing can be seen in the past two years uh, because 2001 to 2000, 2021, 2022, and including now, the market still hasn't recovered. You can see from the peak, it's been going down and still isn't like a consolidation, doesn't recover at the highs, but the strategy has performed extremely well. And, and the reason why is because of the recessionary environment. Recessionary volatility-based, uh, high volatility-based environment gives great results uh, for mean reverting strategy. So, what we're going to do, so if you guys want to check out this course, feel free to visit our website, the Quant Program, and this strategy comes in the Quant Program Prometheus, uh, which includes 10 strategies, and it also includes many other important strategies, along with trend following and momentum based, and also Monte Carlo simulation, portfolio optimization, forward testing, and all the other important quant trading tools necessary. Uh, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to discuss what the Markov process is, because Markov process is what... Um, what we saw from the book and what is a Markov process and how we can create trading strategies from the Markov process. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. 
Count on American. Like smart program so here. to start off with, uh, Markov Dr. process M. is basically a random sequence of events where the probabilities of the future Amaz is. Amaz says, "Did you ever play with uh, visualizing the data in different plots?" Not, nah, I really. What type of plots you thinking about, bro? Tell me more. Based on the current state, okay. It's not based on the past. So tomorrow's probabilities depends upon today. It's not dependent on yesterday. So for instance, if I have to predict the weather, um, the weather prediction for tomorrow is based on today and not yesterday. So Markov process is used in many different fields, just not in the quantitative trading field. It's also used in weather forecasting and many other fields. Um, so I hope you guys understood the definition of Markov process. Now I'm going to the example of it so you guys get an idea uh, in simple terms. So let's take two scenarios. So one is a Markov guy and the other is a human being. So let's take the case of a human being. Let's take myself as a condition. So I wake up in the morning, I uh, wake up at home, and then I go to the shop to buy some stuff, and I buy the stuff, and then I go to work. Uh, so when I reach the shop, I know I came from home, so there's no reason for me to go back to home, so I can go straight to work. So Markov, on the other hand, he goes from home and goes straight to the shop, and now he's in the current state, right? Uh, so in the current state, he can go either home or to work, because he doesn't know what happened in the previous instance uh, as compared to human being. So the whole Markov probabilities is based on this um, this current state and future state because the shop is where the current state is and once Markov is in that current state of the shop, he can go either to home or to work. But when Markov is at work, he has nowhere else to go, so he goes straight to shop. Same thing goes when he's at home, he has nowhere else to go, and then he goes straight to the shop. Uh, so if you're calculating the probabilities of the Markov, that's when things get slightly, uh, not complicated, but the numbers start to come into play. So when he's at home, there's only one place for him to go, and that is to the shop. So there's a 100% probability that he will go to the shop, so then we write one. Uh, now on the other scenario, when he's at the shop, as I said before, he doesn't know where, they, where he came back from, so he can go either to home or to work. So now there's a 50% chance for him to go either home or work. Now, once Marco reaches work, again, he has nowhere else to go, so he's got a 100% probability that he will go to the shop. So this is how simple the Marco probability is. Now, if you are putting this into trading perspective, so let's, let's take a trading example into consideration. So forget the thing that's going on here. Let's just focus on this one here. So these numbers are hypothetical numbers. So I'm going to explain to you uh, what this is all about. So you see this positive percentage and negative percentage. So whenever you see the news, you always see the market went up 5% and the market went down 2% and things like that. So that's a percentage move for the specific day. So in this percentage, positive percentage move, the 0 0.7 depicts the probability of the next day being positive percentage. So if today is a positive percentage close, if today is an up day, uh, then the next day's probability is 0 0.7. Now the 0 0.7 is just a hypothetical number, so don't, don't go deep into it as of now. Um, so this positive percentage, for the next day to be a positive percentage, is 0 0.7. So what will be a negative percentage? It's pretty simple. It's 1 minus 0 0.7, that is 0 0.3. So you can see the arrow here, that's minus percentage. So similarly, when it's today's negative percentage, what is the probability that the next day will be negative? Well, here I put in 0 0.2. So what's the probability that it will be a positive? It's 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. Now, how did I come across all these numbers? Well, you can calculate in many ways. You can calculate just based on historical data. You can, you can calculate the number of up days and the number of down days and divide it by the uh, up day and the total number of down days, and we'll get the probability of the up days and down days. And then there are machine learning models as well. So if you can go through that book, uh, one of the things that they have done is even after, before many years, we're talking about 30 years or so, uh, they've been using machine learning models. Uh, but now these days you can use machine learning models with just a few lines of code. Uh, so I hope you guys understood the whole idea of this thing, of this Markov probabilities. These numbers are just hypothetical. But now you can put this into a matrix, right? This is called a transitional matrix. So you've got the positive percentage, you've got the negative percentage, you've got the positive percentage, you've got the negative percentage here as well in the columns. So a positive percentage and the next day is a positive percentage is 0 0.7 as you saw here. Similarly, a positive percentage and the next day is a negative percentage is 0 0.3. Again, negative percentage day and the next day is a positive percentage day is 0 0.8, as you can see here. And a negative percentage followed by the next day, a negative percentage is 0 0.2. So if you can observe something, 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3 is 1 and 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 is again 1. So this is basically a transition matrix. So here we have just taken two days in a row. So we can actually have more rows and more columns where you can have uh, plus, plus, minus, minus here, or plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. You can have many kinds of permutations and combinations in this, but this is basically a mark of trading. And this is how we calculate the trading probability. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a real world example on SPY, and we're gonna calculate the probabilities uh, of the SPY getting a positive percentage on the next day following the previous day being the positive percentage and similarly negative and negative and negative and positive. So this is the Anaconda notebook where we'll be calculating the uh, Markov process and transition probabilities. Um, 
And if you don't know anything about Python, your then time I is limited. You to go so to our don't waste our it channel, living someone else's life. In Python, so you get the basics of how to do Python. Uh, so it'll be really beneficial for you in your quant trading journey. You can also do the trading with PineScript if you fancy as well. So now going to the Anaconda notebook. So first thing we do is basically we download the Y Finance library and the pandas and the NumPy, which is necessary for us to calculate many things. Uh, then we download the data. So we download the data for SPY from 2010 to 2022. You can download more data or you can keep the data smaller so you can assess different time periods. So for example, if you want to just assess the recessionary time period, you can just do the 2008 or the 2001.com uh, bubble crash. So you get the recessionary environment data as well. So it's up to you really. So I've just randomly chosen 2010 uh, to 2022. Um, and then we've actually downloaded the data. Um, and basically you can see the open, high, low, close, and the adjust close and the volume. So we need to calculate the daily return. So we're going to take the adjust close and dot percentage change function, and that will give us the percentage difference between yesterday and today, uh, and also the state. So basically state is where uh, the daily return is greater or equal to zero. We have got up. So we've got the num uh, uh, NumPy, Pandas NumPy, SNP. So that's where we use NB here. Uh, so daily return is greater than equal to zero. Then it's an up day, else it's a down day. And then we have stored it in data of state. Um, so then here is the data frame of the data and you can see the daily return here and whether it's an up percentage close or a down percentage close. So you can see whenever there's a positive one, it's up. Uh, and whenever there's a negative one, it's down negative here. Again, it's down uh, negative here. It's again down as well. So basically, uh, we're using uh, just pure math to find out the probabilities as compared to using machine learning models. However, uh, in the book, they've talked about machine learning models and that was years ago. So now you can do a uh, machine learning models just with a few lines of code. So if you guys are stoked about doing this, making this more efficient, then go ahead with the machine learning model as well. But as of now, we're just going to make it simple so you guys can understand the process. So we've got the up counts and the down counts. So up counts is basically you take the length of the data of... Um... Así logré recorrer el mundo a través de mi bebida con Photoshop. Elegí mi bebida, escogí la herramienta de relleno... The state where it's up so how many days has there been up and then similarly down counts give you the length so how many days it's been down so if you can get that information then we can calculate the probabilities we're not going to use these two lines of codes anyway but it's just created to give you an understanding on how to calculate the probabilities so up to up is like two consecutive positive percentage close uh, down to up is a negative day followed by a positive day and up to down similarly and down to down two consecutive uh, down days so we calculate the length of the how many times the days has been like consecutive updates and then we divide it by the update and that'll give us the probability of a two consecutive updates. Similarly, uh, down to up, up to down and down to down. And then we'll do a transition matrix where we've got like a pandas data frame and we're going to put all these results into like a matrix kind of a, a fancy kind of a way. Uh, and then we'll print the transition matrix and we've got the information. So you can see up to up is 54%, up to down is 45%. Down to up is 57 and down to down is 42. So the best performing is an up day after a down day. So that is 57%. So if I'm going to take any bet in all these four conditions, my bet will be to go uh, for an up day after a down day because there's a 57% chance for that to work out. Uh, now down to down is significantly lower. So it's just 42%. So there's nothing mm -hmm. significant for us to, uh, you know, make a trade in. So in all these numbers, these numbers are not that significant. It's on the 50%, 40% area. So I want something more effective. So let's do another one. Let's do... Uh, what's the probability of up day if there is five consecutive down days? So down day, down day, down day, down day, down day. And then we divide it by the length. That's here. Again, length of the uh, five or six down days. And what is the probability of that? So that probability is 66%. Now, that is a pretty good probability. 66% is something that I can work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information that I've got like five to six days of down days and the probability of the next day being an up day is pretty good. So I'm going to take this information and I'm going to back test it. So nine times out of 10, I would back test in Ambi Broker, but now just to make things simple, I'm just going to go into Pine Editor uh, and I'm going to do a condition where close is less than one, close of one is less than close of two. So basically yesterday's close is lower than the prior day. So we've got that condition for five to six days. And that is our entry if that condition is met. And then we are going to close our position if the next day close is higher than uh, today's close. Um, so it's pretty simple. Now you can create a Markov model for the exit condition as well. So what is the probability of us having a greater return if the close is tomorrow or two days later? So then we can calculate a better probability and create even better strategy. So when you run the strategy, you would see the result as 46% with a drawdown of just 5%. So this is not at all significant uh, when you look at simple terms, but when you look in the overall perspective, it's pretty good because you can see there's only 20 trades placed that that's from 1994. And it's only based on one condition. So imagine if you create multiple conditions on Marco models. So here we did six days of consecutive close below. So what about five days? What about four days? What about a combination like uh, up, down, up, followed by an up day? 
or down, down, up, followed by an update. So then you can add up more and more conditions uh, if the probability is shooting you like 60% up and then your net profit starts climbing up and up and up again. And because you've got more conditions, the drawdowns start to uh, be better as well. Because if you're basing it on just one strategy, then the drawdowns won't be that significant. So you need to have more strategies. So we did the video, uh, just the prior video, the GPT-4, where we did a strategy wherein we had a strategy applied to 25 stocks and also 90 stocks and how we were able to reduce the drawdown considerably just by doing the uh, strategy in multiple stocks. Similarly, if you can add more conditions to this, this will uh, be spectacular. So the whole idea of this video is for you guys to understand what a Markov process is, to code it in Python and then apply it uh, in your trading goals. So for example, the Q5 strategy that we did uh, in our course, if you can look at it, uh, because it's a mean reverting strategy, and also the fact that it's kind of inspired from the Markovian model, uh, you can see how amazingly it performs. So this is the 2000 dot com bubble. The market just crashed considerably well, and you can see it's literally a diagonal, uh, you know, literally across. Uh, similarly here, again, 2008 crash where it went down 54%, and look at the results of that strategy. Again, recently, past two years, uh, the market went down, and this strategy has outperformed the market, and the drawdown is quite minimal as well. So this is the advantage of Markovian model. So in this strategy, I picked the Markovian model, uh, and I effectively uh, did, I don't want to give out much information about it, but the people who know the course uh, know how I can Buying two different things. I've chosen the days similar to what we saw here. Uh, the close is less than one kind of thing, but then I use the exit condition to be slightly tweaked. Um, so these are some of the things that you can efficiently do in creating good strategies. Great strategies are based on good probabilities. So in this case, we've got a 66% probability and that's why it kind of worked. Uh, so even if I go to the ETF of QQQ, again, you'll see a 21% return and Microsoft and Walmart and the list just goes on. So you will basically see just, on, just based on one condition, right? So imagine having multiple conditions and applying this to multiple stocks. And this is pretty much what Jim Smith is doing. Uh, and we don't know exactly what he's doing, but all we can do is to get information from the book, information from any kind of interviews he does, you know, combine together uh, and kind of improve but regardless, when you're on your quant trading journey, you're trying to get the probabilities in your favor. So any tool, including the Markovian process uh, and calculate the transition probabilities is highly efficient. So in this case, we actually did, you know, just based on historical data probabilities. Now you can actually tweak that to use a machine learning model to calculate the probabilities of these. Uh, you can go a step further, create a for loop and change these down data and, you know, uh, down and up to different combinations and calculate more properties, create a massive matrix, not just up, up, down, like, you know, like 10, 10 rows here, 10, uh, 10 columns there. And then uh, you can tweak the data points, you know, instead of this, you can actually do the recessionary environment. So you can create a recessionary based environment strategy or trend following strategy. So, so sky's the limit when you have data and when you have the tools and the skills to process it. So I hope you guys like this video. If you have any queries, I any, uh, it, any doubts or clarification, feel free to leave a comment uh, and I'll be more than so applying the Markov to multiple assets maybe at the same time and you know it showed a 54 percent uh, probability like two day or a down day would follow up day now if you apply that to, across multiple different um, symbols and tickers then there might be some alpha so Markov Markov prob Ability. Markov probably. Uh, on multiple symbols in order to track probability of things like, for example, 54% oh, of up day after a down day and it's not going to work on just one symbol but hey if you go ahead and you try with multiple symbols and kind of smooth out that PL by having some long some short who knows dude i thought this was a good video thanks for sharing it quant program i'll go ahead and hit you a lick a little lizzie right there and much love to you as always